Welcome back. It's another episode of Butt Crack Cycles, and today we are doing some more shovel head stuff. So I'm not going to talk too much about this. If you want to kind of catch up with this bike and see where I'm at in this project, um, there's a playlist for this motorcycle. It's called like Frankenstein Shovel Head or something. You can go back and watch videos. But very quick recap: um, what I'm lacking to put this bike back on the road and and finally take it on my first test ride is mount my front master cylinder, connect a longer front brake hose down to the splitter that goes off of, you know, to the two um, calipers, bleed the brakes, um, I'm sitting here looking at it, different throttle cable, block off my speedometer, um, where the speedometer cable used to go in the transmission, put a block off on that, and then mount and wire a headlight. Pretty much all of those parts that I need right here in this box, plus uh, some bonus Bojangles chicken and biscuit content. So let's see some chicken and fix a motorcycle. So once again, I am back in throttle cable hell on this bike. I ordered a longer throttle cable because the old one was too short, but the free play on it is totally wrong. It's hooked up with the carburetor and this is how much I have. So. Obviously that's not enough to actually get hooked to the uh, throttle tube there without pulling the carburetor way open. I bet if I started this bike up with it actually these two hooked together, it would be turning like 2,000 RPM all the time. Um, I'm just really, really frustrated with this thing right now. It's like every part I order for it is wrong. Um, and I'll order the same part three or four times trying to get the right thing nothing on this bike is factory I, obviously I can't make a throttle cable so I have to buy it from someone um, and many online parts retailers don't do a good job of listing very specific details of little small parts like this so you're stuck with just ordering something and hoping it works and so far nothing on this bike has worked Okay, so now that I'm done whining, I think I actually finally got this. And here's what I did. I got this throttle plate from Lowbrow Customs, and you can see that it has uh, this throttle cable guide plate, whatever you want to call it. This sits up way higher than it normally would. This is normally really low. And with the other throttle cables that I've had, all three of them, that had way more free play in the cable, this is what you needed to actually be able to open the throttle. This new cable is the right length of the outside sheath, but the free play is shorter, so this wasn't working. So I took the carburetor back off, took this off. So I just run into everything in here and put the original one back on. If you can see that right there. And now, the throttle plates are closed, and when I whack the throttle, I can open the throttle. And there's not a ton of free play in the cable, so I bet this will work. Let's try it. So I ran the bike out of gas, but it seems like it runs pretty good, and I'm really, really, really close to riding this thing. 
Um, I need to put a seat on it. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. This is not the seat for this bike. It's just laying on there. This is the seat off of uh, Chris's hardtail Ironhead Sportster back there. We just kind of jokingly laid it on the shovel head earlier this morning. It really doesn't look too bad, honestly. I'm probably uh, not going to go with something like that, though. I'll, I'll tell you all about the seat in a minute. And uh, moving up here to the front of the bike, you can see the wiring for the headlight is complete. So, sham wow. Billy Mays for OxyClean. We've got lights, baby. So pretty much, this bike has everything that it needs to run and ride, other than some more gas in it, some front brakes that don't leak and actually work, and a seat that I can sit on. And I'm going to go put the camera up and, and talk into the camera and tell you all about the seat, because this is kind of another disaster. Okay. So, about the seat. This bike had a Mustang seat on it that I did not like. Um, to me, it was kind of like too new school. It looked like something that would have been good on like a Dynaglide or a FXR. But I, I just didn't think it was the right seat for this bike. This bike just had like a real like 70s, late 70s, early 80s feel to it to me. I kind of wanted to keep that alive in the spirit of this motorcycle as I rebuilt it in my liking. And so what I ended up doing was I bought a seat off of eBay. It was a, a Corbin seat. And then I listed the Mustang seat for sale. Well, I sold the Mustang seat before the Corbin seat ever showed up. And the Corbin seat was coming from a seller in North Carolina. He's about a hundred miles away from me. Is a motorcycle shop. Is how it was listed. Had all kinds of listings for sale, so seemed you know probably reputable. And three weeks go by, and I've sold the seat off of this bike already at this point in time, and I still haven't seen my new seat. And I've sent the guy multiple messages at this point in time, and finally he responded to me three days ago, and he says, oh, one of my employees screwed up and mixed up your order with someone else's, so they sent your seat to someone else. Then he offers to replace my seat with another seat. He says, I have lots of shovelhead seats for sale, including another Corbin seat that's just like the one you bought. So he sends me some pictures of this other Corbin seat, and it's a piece of shit. Uh, the bottom side of it, the floor plate of it, is all rusted. All along the bottom where the, the the upholstery rolls around onto the seat frame is ripped. The top of it's all cracked. The leather, pleather, whatever, just looks dry and, and gray and cracked. And the seat that I bought was really nice. It, it didn't look crappy at all. He's like, I'll swap you this seat out straight up just to make it right. And at this point in time, I'm like, dude, there's no way. I paid you for a good, quality, nice seat that was listed in your ad and your pictures, and now three weeks go by and I haven't been able to get a hold of you, and your response is, oops, sorry, one of my guys screwed up, so take this crappy seat in exchange. Um, it just felt like a bait and switch to me, so I told him he needs to refund me my money, which he still hasn't done. And uh, long story short, I know I've been rambling about this for a while, just really just bothered me. Um, I don't have a seat for this bike now. I don't know. I'm just, I'm hot, I'm tired, I'm frustrated. I want to ride my bike, and um, it seems like every time I turn around on this thing, something else is effed up, and I, you know, take two steps forward and take one step back. I'm, I'm really frustrated on this bike right now. So, I'm going to turn the camera off, and, uh, I'm going to go home. So I've got the master cylinder on there and put my new brake hose on. Take a step back here and refocus the camera and you can kind of see how I routed it. This is a 30 inch line. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what size I needed so 
Maybe this isn't the cleanest of routing, but it's also not terrible. It'll get the job done. I'm gonna bleed some brakes here and uh, yeah, go from there. So I went to bleed the brakes on this thing and let me try and get a little closer to it. See if the camera will focus that closely. Hey, look at it. There it goes. Um, it is wet right there on that caliper. Try and brighten this up a little bit, but uh, it's wet right here. See my my finger is wet, and that's just from sort of pumping the uh, the front brake lever. Um, it looks like it's actually coming from higher up than that. It is wet up here as well on that brake hose, so looks like I need to replace that brake hose. And then I can finally try and bleed these brakes. Uh, the little gray rain cloud that seems to just be haunting this bike continues though. I can't get these bleeder screws broken loose. I believe they're supposed to be a 3 8 but they're kind of rounded off. You can't get a box end wrench on them because of how close they sit to that front fork tube. I might just end up breaking the calipers loose and kind of tilting the caliper back so it's still has the pad over top of the rotor so I'm not just squishing the the brake pads down onto nothing um, and try and bleed it like that. So I'm kind of an idiot sometimes if y'all haven't figured this out already but my brake fluid leak was from where I installed right here that new brake line that goes up to uh, you know my new master cylinder and that banjo bolt right there I just had it uh, finger tight so when I filled the master cylinder up with fluid it just ran down across the splitter and was running down that hose over there because you know gravity um, so I tightened that up let me take a step back and I have been working on bleeding the brakes on this bike. It took forever before I finally got some fluid coming out of the calipers, but I can never get good stream to really push out. And um, I think I'm going to try and get a vacuum bleeder and try that before I condemn any parts. And I also got a new brake switch put in. So I have brake lights now. And that's wonderful. I just need to get all of the brakes working. Back brakes work good. Front brakes don't. And... I know a lot of guys like to put spool wheels on choppers and ride them with just back brakes, but that's not me. Stopping is good. It's been about a week since I filmed those clips trying to bleed the front brakes and ended up using a vacuum bleeder and getting a good brake feel on the lever and brakes that seem like they work. So a couple days ago, I went to go take it on its maiden voyage, its very first test ride since I've done all this work to it. And I pretty much just made it to the end of the driveway and parts started falling off. Uh, I'm gonna roll some cell phone camera footage of that here. So I went on a test drive. The driveway is the one right there. That's as far as I made it. Bike looks kinda cool, but um, the whole entire front brake lever fell out. So I'm walking around in the grass trying to find the rest. So far, I found the lever itself, the pin, and the hole that it goes in, that little piece, but I still haven't found the pin that goes up and down, so I'm going to walk down the road, but hey, you know, at least the bike looks pretty cool. Here comes my backup. He's going to help me look. <laughs> Make it too far, buddy. 
Yeah, look how far I made it there, eh? <laughs> and amazingly, Chris and I were able to find all of the parts for that front master cylinder. Even the little spring that goes on the plunger. I can't believe we found that. All we can think of is that the pin that goes up and down and holds the lever into the master cylinder housing, that that E-clip on the bottom wasn't installed all the way. And when I hit some of the bumps that are right here in front of the driveway, that it popped the E-clip off, that pin jumped up out of the housing, and the lever and all the stuff behind it just fell out in the road. Uh, thankfully, it did it right here in front of the shop, not like 10 miles down the road, and I was only going, you know, five or eight miles an hour, so the parts didn't get strewn about, and they were actually fairly easy to find. Anyways, um, I rode it back up to the shop with just the back brakes, and we put the front master cylinder back together. I went to go ride it again, and I hit the front brakes a couple times, leaving the driveway, and I locked the front wheel up. This is really frustrating to me, but also not surprising. Um, if you watched all the way back to my first episode about this bike, when I bought it, the front wheel was almost locked down. You could barely push the bike because the front calipers were locked up. I was hoping that just changing the master cylinder might be enough since the fluid in the old master cylinder was crystallized and that I could push whatever old fluid and crap out of the um, brake calipers. But what I ended up having to do was this. I had to beat both of the front calipers off so I could uh, push the bike up to the shop and then I just ended up looping the front brakes together at the splitter so I'm not leaking too much fluid. And then I just said, well screw it, I want to ride this thing anyways, I'm going to go ride it with no, uh, with no front brakes. And I took off down the road and it's running like absolute dog crap. So I turned around and came back and just parked it. And I'll show you what's wrong with that, why it's running bad right now, and then we'll come back and talk some more. So when I did ride this to the end of the street and back with no front brakes on it, it was running terribly. You couldn't give it any throttle before it starts spitting and sputtering. It seemed like it would idle okay, but pretty much just ran bad. And that is why. Intake boots on this thing have guess decided to leave the chat which is crazy because I've had this carburetor off three or four times probably more than that in the process of this uh, rebuild and I've never noticed that being loose and the other day this bike was running perfectly you could kick it over cold it take you know two um, two priming kicks with the enricher up turn the key on and kick it one time maybe twice with it live and it would fire right up and now I bet this bike won't even start today. So obviously I still have a lot of work to do on this bike before it's rideable. I still don't have a real seat on it. I need to fix the front brakes, so I need to order two calipers, maybe even two lines. Um, I need to fix that intake boot leaking. And today is August the 20th, it's a Sunday. We have to be out of the shop in four days. So a bunch of our buddies are coming over today with trucks and trailers and we're just gonna clear this place out and just leave the bare minimum for me and Chris to work the next three days while we continue to move crap to the new place. Um, so bottom line is this bike sitting right behind me is gonna have to leave this shop on a trailer, which is really frustrating. And uh, I'm kind of a little burnout on this project, but I don't have any time for motorcycles today. I don't have any time for motorcycles or YouTube at all this week. So the next time I'll see, we'll see y'all will probably be on the 25th, and we will talk a little bit more about this bike when it's in its new home. Okay, so it is now August 25th. It's five days later, and I have spent the last five days working 10 and 12 hours a day uh, cleaning the shop out and moving. And the shovel head is right here behind me over my shoulder. Chris's iron head is over my other shoulder, and they are sitting in their new temporary home. And if you haven't figured this out, this is a storage unit. And this stuff's in a storage unit because as of today, Chris and I are going our separate ways as business partners, though not as friends. Everything's totally cool between us, friendship-wise. Um, I will talk more about that in the future. I have a lot of plans as far as what I'm going to do for work, and a lot of that will very greatly impact the content that y'all see on this YouTube channel. 
but I think that deserves to be its own episode um, for many reasons. So stay tuned for that. As far as the motorcycle, the shovel head, well, right now it just has to go on the back burner. I have so many other things going on in my life right now over the next month or so that I'm not going to have any time to devote to this bike. And I have also poured a lot of time and a lot of money into this motorcycle with, you know, I haven't ridden it once. I don't want to say with no reward, but I'm a little burnt out on this project. I'm a little frustrated with this project. I just need a break. And I think that's how we're going to end this episode. Sometimes you just need to take a step back and take a breather on a project. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sorry that I didn't get to finish this episode with me riding it triumphantly off into the sunset and ripping big fat burnouts and stuff in an empty parking lot, but that is just life sometimes, and that's the way Project Motorcycles go sometimes, and um, right now, all of this other stuff in my life is way more important than finishing this bike. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I, I hate to kind of leave it on a down note, but just know, this bike will come back. Thanks for watching.